morning, good morning all. We now start the New Testament, Matthew chapters 1 to 4. Very important um, beginning of the New Testament. Do not think of the Bible in terms of the Old and New Testaments, however. That is a false division of man, not of and not mentioned in the Bible. Probably of a deceiver or on his agents, as it has led to much misunderstanding. Think of it as either the first and second testaments, before and after Yeshua the Messiah, or the prophesied things in the Old Testament and the fulfilled things in the New Testament. The revelation of the old via the new. In thinking in the deceiver's terms of old, it implies replaced something or something's been done away with, etc. Nothing could be further from the truth. and the high priest, but the system and appointed times of the system remains. There are no prophecies about the law being done away with in the Old Testament, so none, nothing of like that can be fulfilled, nor that they will be cancelled or anything like that to do with the law. And that includes Jeremiah 31, 31, which may people may, some people may use. That says that the law be put in, or even it wasn't the law, the new covenant, the law be put in people's hearts, not that it will be done away with. And this we shall see as we continue to study in the New Testament. Luke chapter 24 verse 44, Messiah Yeshua speaking, says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, or really of God, but given through Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. So, having completed the law, the prophets, and the Psalms, we should know all, or at least about 90% of all we need to know about God and Yeshua, which most people call Jesus, and also salvation. Those three sections of the uh, scriptures all plotted a straight line of dots that should have given wisdom, understanding, and the ability to rightly divide the word of truth from error or misunderstood teachings of either the apostles' writings, Paul's writings, or pastors' teachings when such understanding or that you get from such right reading, reading or, or, or other people's speech, speeches deviate from that line set by the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. Second Timothy, chapter, chapter 3, 15, Paul speaking, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which means Old Testament, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in the Messiah. Another quote from Paul, Second Timothy 2, 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So as Peter says, I think in Second Peter 3.16, if you do not understand that Paul's writings must confirm or must tally with what the law, the prophets and the psalm says, you are misunderstanding Paul's. The precept so far that we have read is keep God's laws to be saved, especially his Sabbaths. Not keeping the laws, polluting them, or even through ignorance or misunderstanding, as King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 12, or the man of God in 1 Kings chapter 13, 18 to 19, brings anger of God and death. So, in other words, no excuses. Breakers of the law had to follow the forgiveness system of repentance and sacrifice as stated in the law, i.e., Leviticus 16, Day of Atonement. And they have to have faith in that that sacrifice be accepted by God for their repented sins. And we shall see that as we come to what John the Baptist preached. Okay, a bit of history on um, Matthew in a minute. So the New Testament will keep to that system, but give a better sacrifice through the promised Messiah who came to die as
as a husband under the law, when Paul talks about the wife, the wife being um, under the law, whilst the husband liveth. So Yeshua came to die under the law to reconcile the wife, the sinful, and scattered tri ten tribes of Israel back to God, the husband. After joining these ten tribes back to the two tribes of Judah, so that all the twelve tribes of Israel will be saved, as it mentions Romans 11.26. If you have prop properly understood the prophecies of the Old Testament, you should read in you, remembering it is not about the natural Gentiles of those other nations, but the scattered ten tribes that became Gentiles living in those foreign nations. The natural Gentiles of those nations always had access to being grafted into one of the twelve tribes, as Ruth did in 1 verse 16, when she said, You're going to be my God, etc. The law actually provides for strangers to be grafted into the twelve tribes of Israel. In Exodus chapters 12, 49, Numbers 15, 16, and 50 and 29, it says, one law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. That was reading from Exodus chapter 12, 49, but the ones of Numbers says the same thing. Coming on to Matthew. Matthew, whose name means gift of Jehovah, left his occupation of gathering taxes, as we read in Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13, in order to follow Yeshua. In Luke chapters 5, 27 to 32, Matthew gave a banquet for Yeshua before becoming one of the twelve apostles, Matthew 10, verse 3. He was an eyewitness of Yeshua's entire ministry. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, form a unique kind of written document. They present four complementary views of the life of Yeshua. Aside from these four Gospels, there are only a few writings in the contemporary historians, Josephus and Tacitus, which the life and activities of Yeshua are noted. Several scholars suggest that they were written down on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit because the number of surviving eyewitnesses of Yeshua's life was dwindling. From early times, Matthew's book has been placed at the beginning of the New Testament. The approximate date for its writing is AD 58 to 68. There is some evidence that it was originally, originally written in Hebrew, or that Matthew made one copy in Hebrew and one in Greek. The large number of Old Testament quotations used in the book seem to indicate that Matthew directed his writings primarily towards a Jewish audience who would obviously know of those quotations. He lays great stress on the Old Testament passages which show that Yeshua was the Messiah, he called Christ, the long-awaited King of Israel. For the most part, the narrative is chronological, though certain portions of the material are grouped according to subject matter, i.e. the Sermon on the Mount in chapters 5 to 7, and the parables in chapter 13. In Matthew's presentation of the life of Yeshua, the central theme is that he is the king of the long-awaited kingdom of God. Of the 15 parables and 20 miracles recorded in the book of Matthew, 10 of the parables and 3 of the miracles are not mentioned in the other Gospels. In addition, the account of the saints who came back to life at Yeshua's resurrection, Matthew 27, 51 and 52, the sealing of Yeshua's tomb and the posting of the Roman guard outside it, Matthew 27, verse 62 to 66, are exclusively recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. To accompany this, what is needed for salvation study, which is what the whole purpose of us reading Genesis Revelations, I suggest you see the nothing new in the New Testament. Matthew section, or email or text me to get it. It should show there was no new teachings in it. It was quotes or explanations of the Old Testament laws in the Gospel of Matthew. However, it is better explained by God himself in his Torah. Today, we have preachers trying to explain the explanation of the apostles rather
rather than going to their source, God's words in his Torah. Okay, coming on to chapter 1, verse 1 of Matthew, the genealogy of Yeshua, the Messiah. The book of the generation of Jesus, as it says in the translations, that comes from a Greek word given a numerical number 2424, 2424. So the word Jesus comes from um, a Greek word 2424, and we shall later see where that, where the Greek word comes from. So, the book of the generation of Jesus, the son of David, the son of Abraham, um, Abraham begat Isaac, and it goes on. I shall take it over from at verse 11. And Josiah begat Jochanias and his brethren about the time that they were carried away into Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jochanias begat Shalitil, and Shalitil begat Jehobelel. And I'll continue from chapter verse 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yeshua, who is called Christ. And the word Christ there comes from a Greek word, the numerical value 5547, and we shall also be exploring that in a moment. Continue from Matthew 1.17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David on to the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon on to, on to the Messiah are 14 generations. Okay, returning to those Greek words for Jesus and Christ. Using Strong's Concordance, we see the original source of the name Jesus, given the Greek word reference, as I said, 2424, equals the Hebrew origin word of 3091. The Hebrew word corresponding with 3091 is Yehushua, which comes from the Greek word, from the Hebrew word, sorry, 3068 and 3467. Yehovah saves or Jehovah, um, the self-existing one. So in, simplicity, in simple terms, Jesus comes from the name Yehoshua, and Yehoshua comes from his father's name, Jehovah, or Yahweh as some pronounce it. So my main point of you to note is the name is not Jesus, but Yeshua. Remember, we are to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son, not the words Father and Son. So I made the point, I doubt that many people have really been baptized because they have not been baptized under the name. Remember Paul said, its sound is distinctive and certain and carries an intended instruction. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 7 And even things without a life given sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Then we have verses that says, And the power is in the actual proper name, or the sound. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So my point is, pronounce the sound, the name Yeshua, as God gave, gave us, not a translation or transliteration as people try to call it, Jesus. Anyway, straight away, um, the connection, Matthew starts with a connection from the Old Testament, is asserted. The tribe of Judah specifically before and after the exile to Babylon. To King David to fit the prophecies as Isaiah chapters 9 verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahweh, the God of hosts, will perform this. Continue from Isaiah chapter 16, 5. And in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in truth and in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. So that's a prophecy about the Messiah. Luke chapter 132, he is also connected to the covenant based on God's precepts that if we keep 
the laws given from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob um, or Israel then the Messiah applies to us the three 14 generations are not coincidence God is one of order and design Joseph was unwilling to take Mary as his wife according to the law assuming she was pregnant by another man so everything we've read so far is in accordance with what God has prescribed. Continue from Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. Now the birth of Yeshua Christ was on this wise. And it goes on to explain. I'll take it on from verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Yahweh by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And that comes from Isaiah chapter seven, verse fourteen. Continuing from Matthew verse one twenty five, chapter one, verse twenty five, and knew her not, talking about Joseph, till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Yeshua. So what have we not noted there? Firstly, Yeshua came for his people, not everyone, nor Gentiles, and are not. So his people cannot be replaced with Christian theology that he came for Christians. He came for the Jews, the Israelites, the congregation who came out of Egypt with Moses. These were persons who covenanted to keep his laws in Exodus chapters 24 verses 4 to 7. Those people were made up of Hebrews and those are joined to them all referred to as the nation of Israel. Acts chapter 7 verses 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall Yahweh your God raise up unto you out of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness, with the angel which spoke to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Matthew chapter 10 verse 6 But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is Yeshua advising his uh, disciples. Matthew 15 24 But he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As we read, we should see there are only two groups. Israel, inclusive of those grafted in by keeping God's law, ways or his laws and others who do not. And, we'll, and Matthew, if you read all of it, will tell you about those who will be burnt in the fire. See also Romans chapter 11 verse 17. Now to be in Christ, as Paul later speaks in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, means to be in, the, in group 1. Those who are separated to be God's people. There is no condemnation to those, but it is condemnation and fire to the other group. Luke chapter 8, 21. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do. I repeat, do it. Revelations 14, 22.14 Blessed are they that do 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 his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into that city. Compare this with Revelations 14.12 um, Those who do not have a right but then they, they need to keep the commandments and if they break it then they need a faith in the Messiah. A second point to note is sins. Sins means the law remains as transgression of the law is sin. First John chapter 3 verse 4. 
So Yeshua has not come to take away, you know, to say that sin no longer exists. There's no, there's no longer, you can no longer break the law. So I said, First John um, three four, sin is transgression of the law. First John chapter three verse eight, he that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. We must know that if there was no law, that means there's no sin. And there's no need for a saviour. So clearly, Yeshua has kept this old system of their sin, for which one needs repentance. Moving on to chapter 2, verse 1. Now when Yeshua was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came a wise man from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. Verse 4. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them, this is Herod, where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judah, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, and thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. That's a prophecy of Micah chapters 2, chapters 5, verse 2. Reading from Matthew chapters 2, 15. And was there until the death of Herod, this is John the Baptist, this is John and so no John, this is Joseph and Mary when they went to the Bethlehem. And it was there unto the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Yahweh by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. That's from Hosea chapter eleven, verse one. Remember also that Israel in nation was also God's son. We see this in Exodus chapter four, verse twenty three, when God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, Release his son. Matthew 2, verse 17. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. That is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15. Matthew 2, verse 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. We have just read of a few prophecies being fulfilled as they were written in the Old Testament. So fulfilled did not mean change nor cancel. Acts chapter 24 verse 5 For we have found this man speaking about Paul, this is a pestilent fellow and a mover of the sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. We are to notice all the prophecies being fulfilled. Are you beginning to see the connections, the continuation of the Old Testament line drawn and the true picture forming? The New Testament being a revelation of the prophecies of the Old Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, speaking about John the Baptist now. And saying, Repent you, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of Yahweh, make his path straight. Verse 6, And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Chapter 3, verse 8. Bring forth therefore fruits, meat of repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. We see confession of sins is still present. There's no change in law. Baptism preceded with confession of transgression, transgression of God's law. 
just as Daniel did in chapters 9, verse 5. Fruits worthy of repentance is a changed life and obedience to the law. Every tree or person who does not bring such fruits are cut down. In other words, cut off or, or blotted out the book of life and thrown into the fire. Continue from chapter 3, verse 13, the baptism of Yeshua. Then cometh Yeshua from Galilee to Jordan on to John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Yeshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Yeshua said it has to be fulfilled, righteousness. If fulfill means cancel, cease or similar, in Matthew 5.18, where people think it means something's been changed, that says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth have Till heaven, and earth part, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So some people use that to say the law has been done away with or changed. If that's the case, then it should also mean the same in Matthew chapters 3.15 about righteousness. In other words, righteousness would have been cancelled or ceased, etc., Clearly, fulfill does not mean that, otherwise it would be foolish. Now do you see one of the deceiver's tactics to make us think the definition of sin has changed, or sins are no longer on the list, through the word misunderstand or the word fulfilled. That way you would not repent, as it says you need to do to be baptized, and would not receive forgiveness of sins. As Yeshua says in Luke 13, 5, unless you repent, you will perish. Moving on to chapter 4, verse 1, Yeshua tested by the devil. Then was Yeshua led up, to, led up of the Spirit into wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Verse 3, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made of bread. But he answered, Yeshua that is, and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then, tell it, uh, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, verse 7, And again Yeshua replied, Yeshua said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt Yahweh thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into, up into an exceeding high mountain, and said something else to him, and Yeshua's reply, and saith unto him, All these things will I give, sorry, this is what the devil keeps saying, All these things I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. <coughs> then saith Yeshua unto, Yeshua unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt work, thou shall worship Yahweh thy God, and him only shall thou serve. All of Yeshua's replies came from the law, i.e. Deuteronomy chapters 8 verse 3, 6 verse 16, and 6 verse 13. The same advice given to us by the apostles in Ephesians chapter 6, which verse 11 says, Put on the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand, verse 14, Stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Not of the Messiah, or the apostles, but God's. Yeshua himself said, only, only God should be worshipped, meaning not him, and only God should we serve. People today keep giving more emphasis and mention of the 
the Son, Yeshua, or Jesus, in their, mind, in their mouths, over the Father, in their songs, in their worship, etc., contrary to what the Scriptures teach and what Yeshua advise. We constantly hear, Jesus, 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 is all that is repeated, rather than God's name, Yahweh, Yehovah, as you care to pronounce it. I suggest we start pronouncing and calling God's name and singing songs to Him rather than Jesus. Matthew chapter 4 verse 14 That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying The land of Zabulun and the land of Nephilim by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in the dark, in the darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time Yeshua began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. At hand means near or here now. Daniel chapter 2.44 And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Also, see parts of Daniel chapter 7 about this kingdom which Yeshua is now setting up. Last couple of verses. Yeshua ministers. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 he says, And Yeshua went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and the healing, so and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. Verse 25, And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from the Capopolis and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. So here we see Yeshua's teaching people, mainly Jews, in the synagogues. Um, it's also like Acts chapter 15, verse 21, where it said that Moses, the Gentiles, who wanted to be grafted into this God system, would also find themselves in the synagogues to hear what has been taught about um, this Messiah. So you see, it is about this family um, who became the nation of Israel and went through four empire changes, now in the Roman Empire period, and here we are. They mentioned the thing about um, things being prophesied, and the New Testament is really a fulfillment of things prophesied, and there's nothing prophesied about the laws being changed. Here is a list of where the things from the New Testament we just read um, in Matthew chapters 1 to 4 come from. Uh, on the left hand column is the old, is new Matthew reference and on the right hand column is the Old Testament references. Just to show you that there's nothing new in the New Testament. There's no new teaching, it is just the old being fulfilled. Shalom, until tomorrow, God willing.